I spent a good amount of time talking about Linux on my channel. I primarily use Linux on my computers other than my Adobe editing and gaming machine. Lots of us in the know talk about how awesome Linux is, but I don't feel like we do a good enough job explaining why. I'm Meeples Fox here to make tech easier to understand and more fun via free educational videos. In today's System76 sponsored video, I really like that I got a t-shirt now in case you can't tell, I'm going to cover some practical reasons to use Linux over Windows, to learn Linux, or to maybe set your grandmother or child up on Linux instead of Windows. Let's take a look. My reasons for using Linux comes down to these five ideas. Stability and compatibility, security, speed, control, and a counterintuitive ease of use, and the normally mentioned reason, cost. The most important reason that I'd suggest anyone to use Linux is for the stability and compatibility. Linux will run on just about anything. Do you have a relative with a 10 year old Windows machine that has slowed to a crawl? You can throw a lightweight distribution on Linux on it and breathe a whole new life into it. Some Linux distributions can run in as little as 16 megabytes of RAM and can be installed from a floppy disk. It's pretty insane. Not only that, but you will very rarely have to mess with drivers ever again. Drivers for the most common hardware are included in the OS, so as soon as you install, you're up and running without needing to hunt down drivers or system utilities or anything like that. I always hate that about setting up new machines. Dedicated graphics cards do have specialized drivers to get the most out of system for gaming, but these drivers are usually just a click away, still provided by the OS, you just have to enable them. Also, Linux is essentially the most stable operating system there is. It is very, very hard to crash your entire Linux machine, especially as an average user. Even if you crash a single program, it's easy to kill and go about your business without even having to restart the computer. Normal users also can't do any serious harm to how the system works without the highest level administrator password. That means if you set up a box for a family member and make them a normal user, there's literally no way for them to brick the machine. You know that horrible feature of Windows where it absolutely 100% forces you to download and install all updates, often even restarting your computer in the middle of you doing something? Or the forced Windows 10 upgrade where people will wake up one day with a brand new operating system that they didn't want? or ever had Windows install an update that caused the PC to crash or blue screen, Linux users simply laugh at that. No forced updates, no forced upgrades, none of that with Linux. Hell, you don't need to update often at all, and it's a lot easier to take a if it ain't broke, don't fix it approach. Your system stays stable. Linux is also configured to be super secure right out of the box. If you've ever experienced the sticker shock of someone trying to sell you on antivirus and firewall suites for Windows, the free and built-in or easily accessible tools available on Linux will make you very happy. By default, Linux is set up to be secure from remote attacks and internal screwing. Like I said before, the normal user can't even make system damaging changes to the computer. They need an administrator or root password to make any significant changes. If someone gained access to your account, the worst they could do is change your wallpaper. Woo! Linux is built on the backbone of Unix, a system designed for many, many users to log into and work on at the same time. Because of this, it's designed with the utmost user security in mind. This also makes it perfect for your kids, too. Not just that, but the vast majority of software installation and updating will come from the official, verified software sources managed by the operating system vendor. No viruses or malware there. No trying to download a Java update and winding up with adware taking over your computer or five different toolbars. That just doesn't happen. It doesn't even make sense in the first place. Lastly, those creating malware and viruses that get normal people are going to want to target the largest common denominator. In this case, that would be the operating system, Windows. So with Linux, they're not even targeting you. Linux is fast. As I said before, lightweight distros of Linux are perfectly capable of running on some of the oldest and slowest computers that still exist. A powerful modern version of Linux can be a completely fast and smooth experience on just 512 megs of RAM. By comparison, Windows Vista required 2 gigabytes of RAM to even run, and modern Windows versions eat up even more. Do family members have old computers struggling to breathe? Linux will let them feel like the computer is brand new again. I'm working on a dedicated video on breathing life into an old Windows Vista laptop very soon. It might even be up by now. It's going to be fun, so check that one out. Not only that, but there's no bloatware or background processes that you don't specifically ask for in Linux. That means that every time you turn it on, it will be just as fast as it was the last time. There's very minimal slowdown over time, like with Windows. With Linux, you have total control over your machine. Don't like a program? Change it. Don't like the way something works? Change it. Don't like what starts up with your machine? 
change it. You can change and adapt just about anything. Heck, you can even roll up your own distribution of Linux if you'd like. But all this talk of control and customizability tends to scare people away. Your average user just wants something to just work, not have years of programming experience to use their computer. Well, that's also the good side of this. The biggest, by far, cause of confusion, panic, or stress that I've seen from computer users in all of my years of tech support, helping people, working with relatives, teaching, and so on, the biggest problem point has been when the computer does something on its own. When you're trying to do something on the computer and a random pop-up shows up asking you for something you have no idea about, or it just starts updating or doing something on its own, ugh, this isn't really a problem with Linux. There are certain required background processes for the standard desktop distribution, but beyond that, you tell it to do something and it does it. That's the only time it does it. This kind of direct control counterintuitively actually makes the system easier to use. No more panic moments when you try to access the internet and three other things start yelling at you. We've already covered how updates are a much less significant issue on Linux, and all of this combines to make Linux a perfect operating system for a basic computer user, your less tech savvy relatives or children. Lastly, we have the issue of cost. Many don't take this discussion super seriously because they've never had to pay for Windows. It comes on pre-built computers. The upgrade to Windows 10 was free for the most, and so on. Why would the cost of the operating system matter? Well, if you need to reinstall or upgrade someone's computer, you'll probably need to buy a new license. Not just that, but the paid operating system ecosystem around Windows means that every little program is going to try to charge you. If you take your computer into some place like Geek Squad or Easy Tech, they'll try to get you to buy their antivirus subscription for like 200 bucks a year. Or if you pay the 50 to $60 Norton subscription, you'll find it slows your computer down to a crawl and will only drive you nuts once it expires. The price of all of this, plus like Microsoft's Office and so on, adds up quick. Not on Linux. You can get everything you need to do your daily tasks for free or with tools built directly into the operating system. WPS Office, which I highly recommend, LibreOffice and Google Docs works almost exactly the same as Microsoft Office, and antivirus tools are free from the operating system vendor or just not needed in the first place. Now, there are paid Linux distros and paid software for Linux. If you need or want a specific thing, of course, I suggest you pay for it. And if you find you rely heavily on a free project, I recommend donating to them every once in a while. Free software may be free to you, but it's not free to make, and these kinds of projects need your support. But overall, you don't need to pay a penny. Installing a free Linux system on your relative's old machine is much cheaper than buying them a new PC. Overall, Linux is great, and I recommend everyone try it out at some point in their lives. Learning and using Linux teaches you a ton about how computers work and how software is made. It'll make you a better and smarter person. If you want to buy a computer made for Linux, check out our sponsor, System76. System76 is a USA-based distributor of high-quality Linux machines designed to unleash your potential. I use my Lemur laptop running Ubuntu from them daily, even to write this video script, and I've never been happier with a laptop. Check them out with the link in the video description. If you liked this video or found it helpful, hit that like button, get subscribed for more awesome tech videos. I'm Vox here to make tech easier for you, and I will see you in the next video.